Welcome to the video lesson on basic chemistry. Chemistry applied in biological context is called biochemistry, and this is why you see your notes titled as such. Let's go ahead and get started talking about mixtures. Mixtures are substances that combine without bonding. Examples of mixtures include suspensions. Suspensions are large particles and they usually separate into layers. If you see a container that says shake before use, this is a great indication that that container holds a suspension, such as Italian dressing. Colloids are me usually contain medium-sized particles and they do not settle out but they are not clear or transparent either. In other words, the particles block the light and they take on the color usually of their medium particles. Examples include milk and blood. Solutions contain the smallest particles in the mixtures category and Solutions are usually clear and do not settle out. A great example of this is sugar water. On the left, you see the sugar being added to the water, and once stirred in, the solution becomes completely clear. In chemistry, the opposite of a mixture is a compound. Compounds are substances that combine or react and are bonded together. So the difference is that mixtures are not bonded while compounds are bonded together. A great example of this is that when we take two hydrogen molecules and add an oxygen molecule, so 2H2 plus 1O2 gives us two H2O molecules which of course we know is water. There are two types of bonds. There are ionic bonds. Ionic bonds have one atom gives another atom electrons. Therefore one atom gains and one atom loses those electrons. The atoms become oppositely charged and stick together. A great example of this is when sodium combines with chlorine. You can see that sodium loses one of its electrons, chlorine gains that electron, and the result that you get is sodium chloride. We know that as table salt. The other type of bond is what is known as a covalent bond. Covalent bonds are when two or more atoms share electrons and stick together. A great example of this is when these two hydrogen molecules combine with that single oxygen molecule, and you can see they share those electrons right there and become bonded together. And this, of course, produces what we know as water. Next, we're going to talk about acids. An acid is a compound that has a hydrogen ion, H+. If it has a hydrogen ion, H+, you know it's an acid. A great example of this is hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid takes the hydrogen ion, H+, and combines with chlorine, which is Cl minus, and together they produce HCl, which is hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a very powerful, strong acid, can be unless diluted, and it's also the same acid that's in your stomach. And here you see the hydrogen ion combined with the chlorine atom to form HCl. The opposite of an acid is a base. You know a substance is a base 
if the compound has a hydroxyl ion. That is, it has an OH. And if it has that OH in its formula, you know it's a base. A great example of this is sodium hydroxide. Sodium, sodium hydroxide is a very strong base that is the result of a sodium ion, Na+, Na is the symbol for sodium, combining with the hydroxyl ion, and here you recognize it with the OH-. So Na plus OH would give you NaOH, which we know is so sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is used in most drain cleaners. And this picture gives you an indication of how strong that base is that it can actually burn your skin if left down there and not washed off in a timely manner. Sometimes in chemistry, we like to combine acids and bases together. When we do this, that's called an acid-base reaction. An example of an acid-base reaction would be taking the acid HCl, which we learned earlier is hydrochloric acid, combining it with the base NaOH, which we learned earlier is sodium hydroxide, and you get plain old water and table salt. Well, you probably recognize that plain old water and table salt aren't harmful in normal quantities. That's because these two bases do what's called neutralize each other. This reaction would be a neutralization reaction as the acid and base reacted to form products that are neither an acid or base and are neutral and therefore aren't that harmful. Here's a nice diagram showing the acid-base reaction of HCl and NaOH. Essentially, it's a neat way to think of this is that acids and bases cancel each other out or destroy each other and produce neutral substances like table salt, NaCl, and just plain old water. The strengths of acids and bases are determined by an, a quantity called pH. pH is a scale that tells you how acidic or basic a substance is. Here is a nice chart that shows some common acids and bases that you may recognize and their relative strengths. Seven is considered neutral. Seven on the pH scale is considered neutral, and that of course would be pure water. Pure water is neither acidic or basic. Numbers greater than seven indicate that that substance has base is is a base. Numbers less than seven indicate that that substance would be an acid. So if you had an acid with a pH of zero or one, that would be very, very strong and dangerous acid. You see here, battery acid, which is sulfuric acid typically, has a pH of 1.5. You don't want to get that on your skin because it will burn your skin. You would have to wash that off quickly to prevent the burn. The acid in your stomach is also very strong and has a pH of 2. Lemon juice, vinegar, pH 4.5. Apple juice is close to being neutral but is slightly acidic at a pH of 6. Your blood is slightly basic and has a pH of 7.4. Baking soda is a base with a pH of 8. Ammonia, which many of us recognize that strong, very strong smell, has a pH of 11. And as discussed earlier with an earlier picture, Drano, which has the base sodium hydroxide in it, is very strong with a pH of 13. Here is another diagram of the pH scale with some nice information here giving you when fish are able to survive. Uh, this this uh, pH scale is specific 
to um, environmental conditions in water. Okay, this pH scale is reversed with the acids on top and the bases on the bottom. And another word for base, by the way, is being alkaline or having alkalinity. In order to determine the pH of a substance, we need to use what is called an indicator. An indicator is simply a substance that changes color and matches up on a color scale to tell you what the pH is. The most common example of an indicator that's used in science classes is what is called litmus paper, L-I-T-M-U-S. What you would do is you would take this piece of paper and you would dip it into your substance and it will turn color. Then you match the color on this sliding scale right here and whatever color most closely matches is the pH of your substance. Some of you may recognize this type of thing if you have a swimming pool and your, you and or your parents try to keep the pH regulated. There, um, there are ways to test the pH in your pool either by adding drops or using paper um, and matching it up to this type of a uh, color scale. We're going to finish this discussion talking about water. Water is a very important substance to living things and is the most common inorganic substance in living tissue. More on the difference between inorganic and organic substances in a later lesson. But water is the most common inorganic substance in living tissues. Water has some pretty odd properties. Water is what is known as polar. That means that it has opposite charges at both ends of its uh, molecule. Over here in this diagram, you can see that in a water molecule, that the H ends of the water molecule are positively charged, and the O end of the water molecule is negatively charged. And if you remember from your basic study of electricity, that positive and negative would be attracted to each other. So that's why this O end of this water molecule is attracted to the H ends of the other mo water molecule above it. So water is polar. Another property of water is that it exhibits cohesion. And that's th that its molecules stick together because of its polar properties. Another property of water is adhesion. And, it, and that's that the molecules can stick to other substances. Water also expands when it freezes and becomes lighter. This is odd. Most substances, when they freeze, condense and therefore become a little heavier. But water does the opposite. It expands when it freezes and becomes lighter. Water requires a lot of heat energy to increase its temperature. This is both a good thing and a bad thing. What, this is the reason that our lakes tend to take a long time to freeze. And even when they do around here in the Finger Lakes, the ends might freeze, but you would be a very, very rare event that you would ever see the middle totally frozen over because it takes water a long time to increase its temperature. And that means it also takes a long time for it to decrease its temperature. Water is also a really good solvent. And what that means is that it's really good at dissolving things. If it, things dissolve easily in it, you are a good solvent. And lastly, water carries off a lot of heat when it evaporates. This diagram shows properties of water and discusses them more in depth. And I would encourage you to pause and read this stuff here on adhesion, cohesion, solvent properties, 
surface tension, which we didn't discuss, and pH level, which we discussed earlier. That'll do it for our discussion on basic chemistry of living things, also known as biochemistry.